I was 33 years old, well over 400 pounds, and food was my prison. And then I learned that food had the answer to my questions, and my kitchen had the cure for my disease. When I was 400 plus pounds, and I, I don't have an exact number because I, I had actually blown past the scales that all had that, that weight limit. Life was all about the food. I was deeply struggling with a processed food addiction. There was this little voice inside me that said, if you don't do something, you will not make it to 40 years old. And that's when I really just fell in love with the idea of how can I be my best self? So I was fighting for me and fighting for my health. When I went plant-based, my whole relationship with food changed. I realized how much better I was feeling. I feel like I'm firing on all cylinders. That's magic to me. And the weight just sort of slowly melted away, which is something I never thought was possible. Now, food prepping for me is a joy. I celebrate the quality of the food. It's just very rewarding. Healing starts at home. Mine did. And so can yours. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and today I'm excited to welcome Gretchen Sauer. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It's a great opportunity, so I appreciate your time today. Oh, absolutely. And it's always fun to share these transformational stories. And as we were discussing earlier before we started recording, really about women in this kind of middle age ground. It's like you're not young, but you're not old, but you got some things going on that's very unique <laughs> to our gender and our yeah. age. And so it'll be fun to hear your story. And Absolutely. so why don't we go back to things were well until they weren't well, kind of just kind of get us started with a little bit of history about you and, and the things that you were facing. Sure. Um, I didn't realize how unhealthy I was until about 2018. Um, I was well over 200 pounds and um, I had been told at that point in time, I needed to have a total knee replacement. I was in my late forties and single mom, two kids. And so I thought, well, I've got to be able to take care of my family. Like I, this is going to be a major undertaking for me. I'm overweight. I can't move and I'm going to be hobbled. So, um, talk to friends and had people, you know, give me a recommendation of a coach. And so I thought, well, that's a good idea. Instead of rehabbing afterwards, let me prehab and start, you know, on the front end, trying to get my body a little stronger than where I was at that point in time. Um, so that was the motivation that started me on my path. And then once I started lifting, um, and getting some health to me, I needed something after the surgery to keep me motivated, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, what else can I do? And the coach and I talked and we decided to try some powerlifting. So I entered a couple of competitions in South Carolina, got some awards for a master level powerlifting. That has to do with age, not my capability. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it was fun and it was engaging. And, you know, it was something that I was super excited about that I started seeing a slight change to myself. Hmm. And at that point, I don't know that I was totally dedicated to the change that was ultimately going to happen to, my, to me. Hmm. And what I mean is that as I got ready to make a move across country, I wanted to like tidy up blood work and see doctors and like finish all those things up. And so I got um, some blood work done at the end of 2018 and moved to Texas in 2019. Those markers on that blood work in 2018 were horrific. Even though I had started lifting, even though I had started trying to make some positive changes in my life, there was kidney disease, there was high cholesterol, like just terrible markers. So Do you happen to remember the numbers, um, people like specifics here and we'll oh, get to that in a second well, Do you um, in general. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the exact numbers, but the, the warning the doctor gave me as I left his office telling him I was moving is that when you get to Texas, you need to find a kidney specialist and get your kidneys worked up. Mm -hmm. You have kidney disease. So, you know, that was, you know, sort of shocking to me because I thought that I was doing sort of good. You know, I was, um, 
eating well, I thought, but I really hadn't delved much into really where I was in my health. Mm. Um, so that was sort of a, an eye opener for me, right? Um, as I moved to Texas, I started thinking like, this is significant, you know, mm -hmm. for me that I'm going to need to go find a specialist. I have to go through all of this workup, you know, ultrasounds and, you know, additional blood work and additional diagnostics. And so talking with friends again, you know, we had talked about plant-based a couple of us before, and I thought, well, why don't I give it a try? Like I, why not? So just on a fluke, um, a few months into living in Texas, I decided, okay, I'm going to be decisive about this and I'm going to make a change. Mm -hmm. And I went cold turkey. And like I said, I think that's a funny way of saying that I went cold turkey to plant-based. Right. And um, I needed to find a doctor here in Texas. And I went um, to have basic uh, blood work done here. So they would have a baseline for me. And every marker was different. Mm -hmm. Kidney disease was gone. The cholesterol was not only within normal range, but great levels. And it was one of those stories that you see on social media and you're like, oh, that's nice. I don't really believe it. <laughs> if it wouldn't have happened to me, I wouldn't have believed it either. Like if I had been scrolling through social media and I saw that come up, I'd been like, okay, making up that story. Mm. But because it happened to me and it was that drastic, I knew that I was onto something for my body finally, that I was actually keying in and listening to what my body had been trying to tell me for five decades. It wasn't happy with how I was eating. Mm. And it wasn't happy with the choices I was making in the kitchen. And within, so that was the middle of 2019. And by the end of 2021, I was down to 130 pounds. So it took me about a, a, over a year to do it. And I cannot believe the difference it made in my life. Mm. I cannot believe the, the transformation that went on in my health and how I feel, how I move, um, all of those things that changed by me making a decisive decision to make my health a priority. Um, my kids don't eat like I do. So I have to make concessions to, you know, plan my meals and things of that nature. But it was just so unbelievable to see those test results for myself mm -hmm. that it was telling. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So questions that will, the audience will be asking, because mm -hmm. having done this for six years, I definitely, uh, I'm, I'm been trained to ask. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. can you tell me about what your diet was before mm -hmm. and what was the change to now? Like, what do you eat on a daily basis now? Because the, that drastic change, I think is important because some people think, oh, I eat fairly healthy when actually, yeah, not really. So I, I like to see that contrast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, beforehand, I don't know that anything was really off limits, mm. you know, so I would eat chicken breasts and egg whites, but I would also enjoy French fries with my kids and going out to have pizza. There was always a way that I could rationalize what I was doing. You know, I'm going to be lifting later on today. So I have some extra mm -hmm. room for calories, you know, that I'm intaking. Um, seriously, I don't know that anything was off limits, even though in my head I was rationalizing that, you know, I'm eating more vegetables. I'm doing the egg whites and the chicken breast and, you know, um, maybe have some lean meat in there other than that, like turkey or something else. But I was still eating processed foods. Mm -hmm. I was still eating, you know, lunch meat and cheeses and things that really were just packed full of fats and other fillers and additives that my body didn't like. Mm -hmm. I suffered from massive migraines for the majority of my life. Wow. It took all sorts of, you know, prophylactics to try and stop the migraines from happening. I had remedy emergency remedy medications to, you know, stop them once they started. I can't tell you how many sick days I would take because of headaches. And then when I changed over in 2019 to plant-based, it was whole food. It wasn't any more lunch meat that has all of these fillers and, you know, things that I knew would create headaches. I stopped mm. eating, you know, processed foods and I went to plant-based that was no more cheese and no more eggs. And what's so interesting is that so many people say to me now, oh, you can't eat that. And I'm like, no, really, I can. I just choose not to. I think this is a choice I've made for myself. I'm perfect. I, I don't have any kind of allergy to eggs or mm -hmm. to dairy or to processed food. There's nothing that stops me 
-hmm. from eating those things, but I choose not to eat them. I choose this for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's not a, it's not a diet for me because this is a choice that I'm making every day to get up and put something healthy in my body that allows me to fuel my body and not eat for any other reason. Like I really have worked and sometimes it's a daily battle, you know, it's not a perfect thing for me every day. I'm not a robot. Mm -hmm. Um, I still have those days when I'm like, okay, you have to fuel your body. You don't get Mm -hmm. to just go off the deep end and, and, you know, enjoy those things. You've had 50 years of enjoying everything. (laughs) The last half of my life, I really want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And part of that is making a conscious choice of what I'm going to do. Mm. So I think that's the vocabulary you're using is really important. And the language you're speaking is that you made a choice, right? It's like, it's a done deal. I'm, you don't eat those things because you've chosen not to. And it's really, mm. so many people feel like um, they're the victim of those circumstances. Like, oh, I can't eat healthier because I live here. Or I'm, my husband doesn't eat this way. Or my kids don't mm-hmm. eat this way. Or they're just coming up with more excuses. But you made the definitive decision no, this is what I need to do. And it works because you made a choice. And if I could just get that through people's heads, you have to be in the frame of mind, but it, it is a choice, a day-to-day choice. It, it absolutely is. And I think that, you know, besides that, it's being consistent mm-hmm. um, with what I'm doing. And um, it's a lot of self-talk and it's a lot of self-love too. Mm. It's not I don't condemn myself. Um, if I'm having a hard workout, I think, you know what, let me celebrate what I am doing that I'm able at 53 to squat that I'm able to bench. Let me celebrate what I can do. Mm. I can't run a marathon. Maybe if I tried, I could, but I celebrate when I get to go out and just do a couple of miles, you know, Mm. that it's a celebration of my body instead of you have to work out because you have been overweight and you don't, and it's not a condemnation of myself any longer. Mm. And it really is a healing process as well as a healthy process that I Mm. went through. And that transformation that, you know, allows me to heal things for myself and has allowed me to also expand, you know, just, just what I am able to do in my life and what I'm able to accept and how I feel. And just, it's been a holistic change, not just my weight. Mm, that's really important. The entire being has changed. Um, and I really am curious because women are really hard on themselves. You spoke a little yeah. bit of self-love and gratitude and we tend to be very critical of ourselves mm-hmm. and speak to ourselves. The person in the mirror is the most abused, uh, yeah. of anyone. Right. And I'm, we're all guilty of it. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're, bombarded with advertisements and expectations of women don't age men can age apparently and be more good looking (laughs) but women age you're just an old whatever really i'm not sure where that came i was like have you seen what these amazing bodies can do we can make babies um but you know and and women are you know hard working the backbone of the family and work and do all these things what was it that allowed you to, or did you, did you have a different conversation? Is the voice different in your head? And if so, how did you do that? And what is it saying or did say? Yeah. So the voice is very different in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it was a clear conscious decision that I made w- with myself that I was no longer going to be a victim. So mm-hmm. I can't tell you how often or how many crutches I have. So you know, before this transformation happened in my life, like I have a thyroid disease. Mm-hmm. How many women don't have, I mean, more women have it than don't. Right. But I would whisper it like it was some kind of catastrophic, you know, life in it. Like I have a thyroid issue, so I can't lose weight. I mean, the crutches I had were unbelievable, you know, like everything. Oh, right. I'm going to have to get my knee replaced. I won't be able to do anything healthy for my, are you kidding me? Like, this, uh, this was the talk that I gave to myself all the time that mm. you just can't, Gretchen. No, mm. you can. You just have chosen so many years not to. And there were so many reasons not to. Bad relationships, young children, tough job. Like, I had them all. Like I was the breadwinner for my family, you know, mm. went through a terrible divorce. So many of us do. But I can continue down that path or I can realize this is the one life I've been given. This is the one life that I get to be happy in. And now I am happiness. 
Mm. I am free now. And it's because I've allowed myself to be that way. Nobody brought that to me. My kids didn't bring me happiness. My kids didn't bring me freedom. My job didn't bring those things to me. I am those things. I am embodied those things for myself. And I think that's one of the things that people don't realize. It's so much easier to take a pill. It's so much easier to have that outside force give you that reinforcement and elevate you and make you feel good. But it's not going to last. It's not sustainable. The only thing that's going to sustain you is you. Mm. And if we continue to, you know, wear ourselves down and have this negative talk and this negative tape that's in our head, then we never get past that. Instead of saying, I am worthy. I'm worthy of grace. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of this. You know, yeah, there are going to be hard things I have to do, but I'm worthy of that. Mm. Mm. So that's amazing. And I love hearing that. So what, what was the moment or was there a series of moments or that led you to go from the excuse making Gretchen Mm -hmm. to Gretchen, you're worth it. You know, where was that? How did that transition begin? It wasn't an immediate like light switch. Hmm. The light switch was when I said, um, I'm going to decisively change the way I am. Hmm. But the light switch about me being positive about myself took time. It Hmm. took time for me to see those things in action, Hmm. you know? So one of the things I constantly hear is trust the process, you know? So um, right now I'm working on my first bodybuilding competition in September. So there's a whole different way of, of eating and structuring my workouts. And I have all this self-doubt, like this is not going to work for me. This is never, you know, all of this stuff is in my head, but I need to trust the process. I've never done it before. How do I know it's not going to work for me? Why am I already being the obstacle? Instead, I need to say, let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I had two C-sections. I've got loose skin from losing weight. I don't think I belong in a bikini, but you know what? I'm owning the fact that I love myself. I want to do this. I want to see what I can do. So Mm. you know what? Let's do it. I think it's it's amazing. So (laughs) I'm so excited for you Um, because when you step outside of your comfort zone, that's where the confidence builds. Even if you don't meet society's mark of a 22 year old in a bikini, your body's produced babies and has been through a journey. And that's the beautiful part is that you're there, right? That journey is like so remarkable. Yeah. I always tell people, you know, wrinkles and stretch marks. Those are, those are my happy places. These means I've laughed. These means I've smiled. It means I've had three amazing children. I can't imagine not having those because that means if I didn't, I wouldn't have had those experiences. So if that's a mark of happiness, so be it. <laughs> I don't know where it probably, but Absolutely. I'm excited for you. So tell us, you know, you've made this beautiful transition. You're talking to yourself differently, which we all know is a journey and ongoing until we're Maybe. done with this earth. <laughs> what is it that you eat now? Because I will get that. Mm-hmm. Clearly yeah, that question sorry. comes up every yeah. single time. And your exercise regimen, because I think to step on a stage, I mean, that takes some courage. So kudos to you. Um, and what does your workout look like right now as you're, you're a couple of months out from stepping up, excuse me, stepping on stage? Yeah. <laughs> um, what I eat now is still really highly focused in whole foods. Um, I do protein shakes um, that are uh, like a vegan for, for the easiest term, you know, that there's no egg, there's no way, there's no anything like that in it. Um, I really try to limit that. I try to have, uh, you know, tofu or tempeh, you know, things like that, that are higher in protein for me. I, I, um, definitely struggle with the carb portion because I'm carb driven. Mm. (laughs) So many of us, like I can eat a carb all day long. Um, and so it's just a matter of balancing that. I know what macros I want to hit. Um, and it's for me right now into competition, it's a lot of tracking, um, and it's a lot of um, just making sure that my calorie intake is sufficient enough to grow and to maintain muscle mass mm-hmm. um, and to not limit myself. If I hit my macros, then I can eat it, you know, when it comes to plant-based. So I try to really not limit myself, beans and um, grains, um, all sorts of lentils, um, tons of vegetables, and like I said, you know, soy products. 
Mm -hmm. It's very much the same as to what I eat um, on a regular day if I'm not prepping for a competition. But I would also add in potatoes and sweet potatoes and things that are more starchy to my mm -hmm. diet if I wasn't prepping for a competition. Mm -hmm. um, so now that I'm getting to the last few weeks um, before, I just have to be more mindful because I have a certain aesthetic that I'm trying for the judges to appreciate, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens when you enter a competition is you are going based on their aesthetic, you know, mm -hmm. and what they are going to grade you on. But as far as my healthy lifestyle goes, I'm still, like I said, I would eat the same kind of things. I would just add in some additional um, vegetables that because of the starch value in them, I would choose to leave out right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as my workouts go, I do something active every day for myself. And some days that's just a two mile walk, um, but I, I'm not gonna just sit on the couch. Like I can't allow myself to just plop down and be on the couch for hours at a time. I need to be engaged and I need to be active. I'm a pretty active person anyhow. Like I can be like an energizer bunny sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I might have a little bit of OCD. My kids would say I have a lot of OCD, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I like to, to just stay busy and stay active for myself. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm able to be active, it's amazing how much more I want to be active. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I never realized that about myself. I always thought that I was super engaged with my kids. I would throw the ball. I would do all sorts of things, you know, but there was a limit to what I was willing to get up and do because I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't appreciate that that was my limiting factor, you know, and now- I'm the one that my 17 year old son is trying to keep up with. You know, there is an ongoing competition as to which one of us can lift more, which mm -hmm. one of us can make the basketball shots, how we go play pickleball, who's winning pickleball. I am still, you know, so I mean, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Soon I will pass the baton and he will be winning all of the games that we compete with each other. On. <laughs> but um, right now I still can take him on some pickleball and some ping pong, but you know, it's those things that um, I didn't realize were inhibiting my relationship with my kids even mm -hmm. because I never would have gone to play pickleball with my son and, you know, certainly would not have won, you know, mm -hmm. a few years ago. So, you know, this has been an eye opening as to how it has changed my relationships with people in my life too. Mm -hmm. um, about 10 years ago, my son had a running event at school and I actually had to have somebody come run with him because I couldn't do the mile. And I thought, you know, they, they can't help. They have an older mom. <laughs> so, you know, I had children later in my life and mm -hmm. I need to be able to do things with them. Um, and if they don't have me, who do they have? Because like I said, I am a single mom. And so it really um, is amazing how things have changed in relationships, even by allowing myself to be more active. Um, besides that, I know that was a long way of answering your question and I'm not quite done, but you know, I also have just a standard powerlifting routine that I do bench deadlift and squats. As we get older, I think that all of those are super important. Um, being able to squat as we get older is one of those things that it's amazing how our muscles atrophy mm -hmm. and, um, we can't get up even from using the restroom as we get into our eighties and nineties are things that people need help with. Um, and I need to be able to be independent, you know? So all of this is to build a healthier future for me and to have me be able to be able to function and take care of myself as long as I can. Um, we also see that in a lot of studies about women that are postmenopausal, which I am now, the kind of exercises we do matter. You know, we should be doing plyometrics. We should be doing some sprints. There are things that help build our bone density um, and there's a lot of good studies that are coming out more recently about women at this age that are athletic. Mm -hmm. And it was really hard for me to identify myself as an athlete because I really don't see myself that way, mm -hmm. but I am, I'm an athlete, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and I think people should embrace, especially women should embrace that fact that you get up and you're moving your body. You're an athlete and you need to, you know, feel yourself like you are and you need mm -hmm. to congratulate yourself for the things you're doing. Mm, that's fantastic. I love it. I love all the positive talk and all the descriptions and <laughs> it really resonates with uh, 
you know, the thousands and thousands of patients that I've seen over the decades of being a physician. It's just so very important that we get out of the way, like you said, remove yourself as the optical to reach your goals and to know that you can obtain those goals. Um, that's incredible. So yeah. they don't happen overnight, but, yeah. um, you know, like I said, this is our one life we get, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll get another life, but you know what? And this one that I'm in, I want it to be a healthy one mm. and nobody's going to bring me health. I've got to find it for myself. Nobody's going to bring me internal love. They're not going to bring me, you know, happiness. Any of those things are, none of those things are coming from the outside. They've got to come from inside. Mm. And so it, it also is really powerful to, to see yourself that way. It's empowering mm. to allow yourself to embrace who you are and our individuality. And the way that I eat is not for everybody, but I can guarantee you, your body's been trying to tell you the things you need to stop eating for a long time. You eat a lot of nuts and you get a headache. Maybe you should consider what you're eating. You know what I mean? Like that was me, you know, I love nuts, but they give me headaches. So why did I go through literally 50 years of eating things that make me feel bad, you know? And mm -hmm. even though there might've been an emotional attachment to it, like I, that's how we satisfy, we have to find a different way of satisfying ourselves. You know, what other hobbies can you have besides eating? You know, on days that are really tough for me, I don't sit in the living room that's attached. We have like a big open living room and kitchen area. I don't sit in the living room if I'm having a tough day with food, because what do I want to do is sneak right on over to that kitchen and come up with a reason that I can make, even if it's plant-based, come up with a reason to eat more calories that I don't need, mm. you know? So what can I do? Is it about going into the other room and reading a book or taking a walk or engaging with the kids, something else to get me out of the kitchen and away from that TV loop of just sitting there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's almost like people react to it. Like they, so there's a norm, right? You, you become so accustomed to this is just what you do that you can't imagine a different life. So it's like, when you run into people who don't take medications and are active and they're older, like you really stand out. Well, I could never do that. But it's like, why can't you? Like you said, you had to plug in first before you could get the energy. Just like, oh, yes, I can. You plug into I'm exercising. So then you want to exercise more. And that's really, really important for people to understand. You have to start the action and it just kind of fuels itself. Yes. Yeah. The, the positivity doesn't come before the action. You have to take the action for it to, for it to show up and for you to recognize it. Mm. I think there are a lot of things that we can do. If you are having the struggles, seeing yourself in a healthier spot, maybe some manifestation work, you know, and things that help us, um, you know, visualize what that could be or what we really want to be at. Maybe you need to work on breathing and yoga and posture. Um, there are a whole myriad of things that you can tap into. Don't cost necessarily a lot of money. It's about trying to open your heart, open yourself up to experiences that are different than what you've normally done. Because if you if you continue to do what you've always done, you're never going to get a different result. Mm -hmm. You know, I always thought that I could get by with, you know, just doing it on my own. And I've had to tap into all kinds of resources that I never really thought about but I, I want this to be successful for myself. And I haven't gone to school for all sorts of knowledge. So I need to tap into people and develop relationships and community around what I want. Hmm. And um, it's, it's about having that community to support you, but that community is not doing it for you, you know? So hmm. find the things that resonate with you. You know, maybe you're not into manifestation and yoga, but you like, I don't know, walking, running a gym or whatever it is, you know, that, um, works for you. Just, um, surround yourself with people that you see Like, I would like to sort of be there. You know, most people are really welcoming and really want to help another one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and you're speaking of that community is such an important aspect. That's a big part where patients will say, or people, you know, I don't have anyone around me, so I can't do this. How did you start that looking for your community and finding your tribe, so to speak, as those who think and do like you do? Yeah. So it, when I was in South Carolina, I had lived there for over two decades. So I had a huge base there. I found a great coach that I clicked with. And, you know, 
I ended up taking a job in Texas. And so since 2019, I have no tribe here. I have no community here, you know? So for the last couple of years, I've had to tap in like this, you know, mm-hmm. remotely. Um, I've had to reach out to people like um, at work and say, okay, do you know of a nutritionist? Do you know of an acupuncturist? Do you know, like, who do you know in the community? And until mm-hmm. I started reaching out and saying, okay, well, I think I want to explore this. Does anybody here at work know somebody? Or on Facebook, you know, if you're a part of like women over 40 that lift, you know, mm-hmm. put something out there and ask, you know, hey, I'm in Texas, you know, in the Austin area, does anybody know somebody that could help me with this? So you have to develop your own community if you don't have one around you. Mm-hmm. When COVID came, I chose to not go to a gym. Um, initially, everything here was shut down. So I had really minimal uh, ability to have a gym here at the house, but I started building it, you know, little bits at a time. And I put things in my gym that work for me, you know, and I've just chosen to stay here. So I've almost cut off the gym community, but I've found somebody that's going to help me with my posing for my upcoming show. And I still reach out to my coach in South Carolina. And, you know, it's interesting now I have people that reach out to me that say, Hey, Gretchen, can you help me like lay out a a workout plan for myself? Or, (laughs) you know, what, when do you eat around your workouts or how much are you looking for your macros and your protein and your carbs and stuff? It's interesting now people ask me and I've become part of their community. I never would have thought would happen, right? I I never thought that people would would come to me and ask me questions, but they've seen that I'm successful in what I'm doing. And I always start by telling them that what I do is probably not exactly what you need to do. You know, there are going to be things that you're able to tolerate that I'm not able to. And things that I do that you probably won't want to or you can't find sustaining, that you don't find sustaining. Hmm. So I think it's all very personal um, and there's a lot of personalization that goes into it and for it to be successful. But your community is what you make of it. Like I left my community, I left my tribe and I have to travel back to see them. Hmm. But that didn't stop me from finding community here. It's just not the same. It wasn't, it's not as intimate. And so I had to dig deeper. And I have to realize that, you know, I do have people I can reach out to. I do have people that I can rely on to keep me going. I'm motivating other people. All of that makes a difference, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself that you think you're super unhealthy and somebody at work asks you to go walk around the block for lunch, go, Mm -hmm. you now have a person in your community, Mm -hmm. you know, or if you have somebody you'd like to walk around the block with, ask them. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. Just yes. go. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's uh, exactly right. So basically, you know, people are saying the community that they have currently. So let's say if you're in South Carolina, but you reached out even within your, your community, your network and saying you're looking for a specific help, you know, the coach or a personal yeah. trainer, you found them. But even still, you had to build it, right? It <laughs> doesn't mean that everyone in your your current family or friends are going to be part of the new community that you need to build for this new part of you or this mm-hmm. new transformation part. Cause there will be parts of your community, your family, your friends that are very frustrated with your change and getting healthier. And that's, that's a very common experience. People, it's almost like Agreed. the people who say they love you want to sabotage you. That's a really interesting uh, conversation yeah. with people. Sometimes it's a very unhealthy, sometimes they're, it's their own personal struggles that I had to have a conversation. That. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So when I first started um, losing weight and going plant-based, like I didn't have enough um, knowledge yet to be able to go out to eat and to pick things off of a menu and be successful at doing that. And even now, like in this competition mode, I would do this. I would pack my food. The kids and I would go out to eat and I would eat the food that I brought with me. The kids would order from the restaurant and I've never had a restaurant ever give me a problem. And, um, you know, after a while they're like, mom, this is sort of awkward. Okay. Then we can all eat at home or you can go ahead and understand that this is what I need to do for myself. So you have a choice either. I'm glad to take you guys out to eat, but this is how I need to eat. And then with coworkers, you know, I, when, if they would pick a restaurant to go to, I'd say, you know what, I'm glad to take a look what they have on the menu, 
but please, if they don't have something, I'm glad to have a cup of coffee if I was going in the morning at breakfast time or you know, a light beer or whatever it is, a nice tea, whatever I decided to have to drink. But if I don't eat, please don't feel awkward about it. You know, so I would say something early on about mm-hmm. it. Um, and then after a while, people just, you know, they, they just realized that either I'd find something that I was able to eat and every, they were not feeling awkward or that I would just have something to drink. But again, it was my choice. Mm-hmm. You know, who's feeling uncomfortable here then because I'm not eating, you know, I don't know, chicken wings and fried mozzarella. I mean, I, I'm the only one that gets to make myself healthy. I'm the one that has to live in this body, not them. Mm-hmm. They don't have to go home to, <laughs> to feeling bad about what I've eaten and sabotage me for the rest of the week and all the mental things that go on. Yeah. So, you know, if they can't support what I was doing, I can't, well, I'm trying to think of, I mean, people would say, are you sure you don't want something to eat? Like there would be pressure to, to get something, but I would just stand my ground and say, you know what? I am perfectly happy with this. Like I'm enjoying my tea, my coffee, my beer, whatever it was, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm good. I want you to enjoy that. That's what you want to enjoy. Like, Mm -hmm. let's chit chat about something else. You know, Mm -hmm. let's, we don't need to talk about what I'm not consuming. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I've told people for you, just because you go out doesn't mean you have to eat or when you're traveling. The other thing is too, is it's okay to ask to go to a different restaurant, you know? Sure. Pretty much anyone can eat anywhere, but if you're a plant-based there's going to be limitations. So if they can make a, a, if there's a restaurant that's suitable to everybody, including yourself, yeah. that's even better. So I, sure. I feel like people do like to have also those suggestions and they're not trying to figure out what you want to be eating and feel that pressure. Yeah. So that there's some other alternatives there too, but yeah. just communicate with nice. them. Yeah. yeah just be open. What? Communicate? I know, just, <laughs> that's such a logical answer. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but just speak your truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't make yourself feel awkward. Like, oh, I feel pressured. I need to order, you know, chips and salsa. And mm-hmm. Don't feel pressured. Just be open. Be open mm-hmm. about your journey. Don't be right. embarrassed about your journey. Celebrate what you're doing. Like if they can't be happy for you, that's telling right there. You, exactly. you know, that that's the other ticket, right? So there's those who are uncomfortable a little bit, but if they start, you know, trying to, like I say, sabotage you, like I have patients who say their spouse or friends or colleagues will actually bring them foods that they know they, they said, I don't want to eat or come and just really try to tempt them. And it's just a bizarre, it's so bizarre to me. Like I would never think to do that to someone. And um, I, it's just, it's frustrating for them as well. So. If it's a spouse, there really needs to be a hard conversation there in a mm-hmm. safe time. Not when the food, they bring you a cinnamon mm-hmm. roll and you're not eating cinnamon roll, like whatever. <laughs> but instead of saying right then, you know, like, why would you bring me this and getting defensive? Mm-hmm. Just, you know, either set it aside, save it for later, share it with the kids, whatever. And mm-hmm. then when this, it's a safe time, you say, hey, you know, let's talk about what I'm doing and why I'm eating this way. Mm-hmm. And just so I understand where you're coming from and I'm not frustrated and, and you don't feel bad or awkward, like, can we just talk about this? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that can, that discussion is just so important on any kind of change we're making in our life. Whoever is significant that's living with us or part of our experience to give them the courtesy of including them about what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're going through and where you're headed a lot of it can be that they're feeling like they were alienated, not included, excluded. So, you know, maybe there is some sabotage going in there. Maybe mm-hmm. they haven't gotten to the point, they're unhealthy and they haven't gotten to the point of being able to pull the trigger for themselves. And they don't want to have you be successful because they just can't get there with you. Mm-hmm. So maybe they need some assistance in finding their health mm-hmm. and finding how they can find their happiness but you can't bring it to them. You can't be their happiness. They have to do it. But none of that's going to solve itself by being swept under the carpet, not discussed, pretending like it doesn't exist. None of those things will solve those problems, you know? So. Yeah. It's, and it goes both ways, right? So people who eat a whole food plant-based diet, they're very keen and excited to share it with other people, right? So we, oh, you should try this. And I think of it backwards as people who are bringing the cinnamon rolls, they're used to you doing this or previously. And they're like, this is their belief, what your life should be eating. Like, this mm-hmm. is what you should be doing. It's kind of like when your kids transition, because my kids are older. So they're 28, 26, almost 24. 
when you see that parenting adults is that transition. It's like, I, what I envisioned for your life no longer matters. It's your life, your decisions, yeah. your choices. And, and that for me is a very, is a mother, <laughs> the one who like to be very hands-on, um, not a helicopter pilot, but definitely involved in their lives. So they stayed out of trouble, but you know, those type of things, that is that transition is that person needs to understand that this is not their life. It's your life, your choice, your body, like you were saying, and they need to come to terms with it, that they continue to do what they want for themselves, but they need, they, you need them to respect that this is your individual with your beliefs, your yeah. choices need to be respected. And if they don't do that, and they continually cause more discomfort and disruption. That is really a red flag for the relationship and the communication piece is so important yeah. there. So yeah, if you true. haven't included them and you, they, they don't have a crystal ball. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. whether it's a husband or a wife or they don't have a crystal ball. They don't know yeah. what you're going through, what you feel, what, what you sense. Mm -hmm. So don't expect them to, well, they should be able to see I'm eating plant-based. No, <laughs> use your words and tell them so that they can understand because their crystal ball is as good as yours, which is foggy mm -hmm. most days, you know? So um, I think that's just super important for people to realize that we think people can read by our actions, but they've got their own stuff going on in their head. Mm -hmm. If you want them to know, you've got to speak. Well, and it's very true. Like you said, you know, it, it kind of speaks to we may have two individuals and they look at the same scenario. They watch a movie and have very different reactions because yeah. they're filtering. The reality is different, right? Yeah. So they're filtering it from their past experiences. That reality is being filtered through those emotions, those yes. beliefs, their everything versus this reality. Now, it doesn't change what's actually happening in front of them, but their interpretation is very Agreed. different. So the reality is, yeah. is relative in that sense. Yes, There is facts of what's happened, but the perception is very different. And if we step back and just observe the thoughts and the emotions, and we're not our thoughts and our emotions, we can observe them. They can come and go. We don't have to act on all of them. That's really important. And same thing for anyone. Just like you said, communicate <laughs> on a crystal ball. They can't read what's going on in your head. Yeah. Most of the time, we don't want them reading what's going on. Right, in your exactly. Head. <laughs> you need to stay out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you what I need you to know, but yeah. <laughs> the rest of it I'm going to keep to myself. Um, but, you know, those are really, really important factors and absolutely true. Absolutely true. So, Thank you for sharing your story. And I always like to ask, because I'm coming up on the hour and okay. don't try, try to be respectful of time. What is your uh, advice to someone who's in this place of, like you said, you, you really feel connected to women who are in our age group as middle-aged ladies who are going through perimenopause, menopause, and haven't been the healthiest. What would be your, your sage advice to them? I think they need to take some earnest time to themselves and think about what do they want to achieve? What do they want to do with their health? What do they want to do with this last part of their life? Like, what is it that they're trying to go for? Are they looking for happiness? Are they looking for weight loss? Are they looking to maybe reach a goal of doing some kind of marathon? Whatever it is that they're looking for, you first of all have to articulate what it is that you want to do with your, your life and yourself. And then you have to be able to take steps each day. Something, it doesn't have to be drastic. You don't have to go cold turkey from you know, eating everything under the sun to plant-based. Like, but what step can you take today that will help get you there? Mm -hmm. And every day that we can take a step towards whatever that goal is, is so helpful. But if you don't have a sense of being as specific, so SMART goals are always really good for people to sort of be able to lay this out. So very specific, something you can measure, something that is, um, you know, um, attainable, realistic and timely. Like you can Google SMART goals and it lays it out for you what, what they mean. But if you don't have something that's very specific about what you're trying to do, how are you going to get there? Like mm -hmm. you need a path way to do that, right? So, you know, initially I thought, well, I just want to be able to do a sit up and maybe take the ability of a stronger knee when I have my, my knee replacement done. Well, I got that done. And then I thought, well, now what's next? You know, so it was always about, okay, I've accomplished that step. What's the next step? Like, I never thought three years ago, I would be doing a bodybuilding competition. <laughs> now I find that because I've lost so much weight, I don't pull heavy weight like I did when I was heavier for powerlifting. 
I had to let the power lift and go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just had to say that was then what's my next step now. So what I envisioned three years ago is not the same thing that's happening to me now. And that's okay. That's, that's perfectly normal because we evolve, we change. I mean, it, we all do our life. We're not the same person we are when we're 20, when we're 30, 40, and 50. You know, we, mm -hmm. we change over that time period. Our beliefs change, how we our structure our lives, how we're functioning, what we're able to tolerate, all changes. So being able to look at that goal and articulate it and take steps each day, even if they're small ones, to get towards that goal. And if you find that, you know what, I really don't know that that's realistic for me, being able to shift gears and say, okay, well, let me think about it again. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's just ethereal and just something that's laying in the back of your head, you're never going to reach a goal if you can't articulate and make steps to get there. So I think that that's the first thing is to be decisive about it and decide this is what I want to do. And to do that, you have to actually think about it and give yourself time mull it over, figure out if it's realistic, you know, pros and cons, whatever kind of Venn diagram works for you, or I don't know, old school paper and, you know, mm -hmm. making your circles or getting on a computer, making a spreadsheet, whatever works, it doesn't matter the process, but it matters that you are honest with yourself and begin to articulate what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And the only thing I'd add to that is just really looking at whatever the goal is, let's say, it's a push up. Okay, what is the smallest part of the push up that you could do? So I have this one patient, and it, as you were talking, really came to mind. And she's older and really just, you know, it's like, she goes, I'm just so tired of this flab and blah, blah, and I want to get stronger. I was like, well, let's do a push up. She goes, I can't do a push up. I was like, I know. Well, let's start on the counter. So she yeah. started and could barely do one. And over the months, what was so fun was she's like, Dr. Marvis, you haven't asked me about my push up. I'm like, well, tell me about your push ups. <laughs> she goes, I can do 60 now. So <gasps> what we did is we set her up with, um, doing them while she was waiting for her hot water for her coffee yeah and she goes I started with one but now I can do 60 on the counters and I was like well it sounds like you need to be heading down to the ground the floor. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. so you know that was really fun to see it went from someone who like I have this huge goal and then she started really building the confidence with that smaller part so just yes. building it to the smallest right. thing you can absolutely know for sure you can do because one it it's a celebration. It's a dopamine hit. It's like confidence boosting. You want to run a mile? Well, start with walking around the block, right? You know, and then you run, walk around the block and then you go from there. So yeah. that is exactly right. So I love it. That's, and you were her community without even knowing it. You were her community. Oh, I am fully aware. I'm the, a lot of people's community when it comes yeah. sometimes <laughs> it's the only way. <laughs> but when we don't, add, and, you know, somebody like, uh, you yeah. didn't ask her right away about the push-up, right. you know, and right. we don't realize sometimes the people we are impacting, you know, right. and the positivity that we can share with other people. So if you I know, could tell you stories of people telling me, yeah. Dr. Mervis, I had a dream about you last night. You were telling <laughs> me it. not to eat this. And she goes, I go in the grocery store and all I can think about is what you're telling me to eat. And yeah. I'm like, if that's what I am. Perfect. I love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm going to make a bobblehead with my, my little head. Thing. I love it. That's great. <laughs> but um, perfect. This was great. And so if people who would like to connect with you, is there anywhere on social media or are you, would you like to connect with anyone who's listening to your story? Sure. I mean, I'm super glad to uh, Facebook. I'm on mostly um, okay. and super glad to give that information. Um, you can find me at Gretchen Sauer on Facebook. I'm Great. in um, Austin, Texas. Um, but super glad if you want to share my information, email um, details with folks. I'm just, I think that the thing I would leave people with is if you don't correct it, you condone it. So if you Ooh. don't correct something about your behavior, that means you're accepting it and condoning it. Mm. It doesn't matter whether it's with yourself or your children, your spouse or coworkers. If something is not healthy for you and you don't correct it, then you're condoning the way that you're doing, the way you're living and, and how that's impacting your life. Right. Absolutely. That's right. It's either a positive or a negative. It's yeah. very seldom neutral. And all you yeah. have is today. So, and you get to, you make, you're making the choice. It's, it's yeah. your choice. Like, I think that that's the part of it that you get to choose mm. whether you correct it or condone it. You know, and that's interesting too, is that some of the most interesting conversations I've had with patients is all around 
giving themselves permission to make yeah. a choice. Like, I didn't know exactly. I could have a choice. Like, yeah, absolutely. You do. You yeah. have a choice every single day. And but by not taking action, you've made your choice. Exactly. And action is your choice. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, we could go on and on. <laughs> I mean, there's so many wonderful segues to further. Yeah. But the basic is make a choice and, yeah. you know, live with it. If you don't like it, make a different choice tomorrow. Yeah. If you want a different result. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. So yeah. perfect. That's a beautiful way to end it. So thank you again, Gretchen. This is a great oh, conversation. Yeah. And I'm sure many people will enjoy it. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm super glad to connect with anybody that would like to chat. Oh, awesome. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe and alert buttons so you don't miss out on any of the amazing content we're working so hard to provide you. We upload a new episode of Health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus every Friday. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find us on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. If you're looking for amazing resources to help you start and sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, or anything wellness, we got you covered there too. Because at Mora, we actually provide physician-led support groups to help people live happier, healthier lives free of metabolic disease. Don't forget to check out our website at mora.com and thanks again for watching.